Hi, Ian and Ryan. Hey. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and then uh, set up the film for us, please? Sure. Um, I'm uh, Ryan Rollins. I play the chairman in the short film The Chairman, uh, which Ian directed. It was just an idea I had in my head for a few years, and uh, Ian wanted to shoot a short, so we sat down and figured out what to shoot. And then we went and put it together. I'm uh, Ian Day. I'm an editor at a local production company called Joe Media, uh, and I went to save. And with my cohorts from state, we always wanted to get together and make stuff after we graduated. Uh, the other three guys that I usually work with are Sainer, <coughs> and Travis Cleland, and they're just all great guys, and we get together really, really well and make great projects. Mm. So uh, set, it, set us uh, up a little bit for the film. Like, what is the film about? The uh, film is... Yeah. And that's why I remember your face because I just <laughs> yeah, <there's laughs> you just sent me some pictures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, of you in it. Yeah. It was just a, a weird idea that, that was floating around my head. I've always written sketches and, and sketch comedy stuff, and this was one that had been sitting around for a while. What about a, a fellow that you see him in an office chair all the time? Because everyone knows someone like that at the office. They always sit in the chair. They never get out of the chair. They go to the fax machine. They go over here. They go over there. And I thought, what if you exaggerated that he never got out of the chair? And then you end up finding out why in the course of the movie. You find out why he never gets out of the chair. Why is he never out of the chair? And um, I had to explain the idea to Ian. He thought it was funny. And we storyboarded. He called me up and said, let's work on it. So we just hammered it out. Yeah, I, so I knew Ryan through another circle of friends other than Hussein, Luke, and Travis. And we, we met at the university every week to just try to think about concepts and short movie concepts that we all wanted to do. And I mentioned this idea that Brian had and they said, yeah, let's do it, let's make it up. It, was just, it, it fits in with my concept of what shorts should be, which is sketch comedy. I'm just so in love with com comedians and sketch comedy that it's just that subtle kids in the hall sort of uh, idea of that if you carried out well, it's just pleasurable that everybody watches it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when you describe the chair, like, I, I do that sometimes, oh, like, does. not, not <laughs> to the extreme, but <laughs> for no apparent reason, like, it would be easier to walk over there yeah. and just roll over. Yeah, why would I stand up? Yeah, I'm already sitting. I yeah. could be sitting uh, over there, too. So how many years did you have that idea, Ryan? Oh, that's been sitting around for... About four or five years. Four or five years? Yeah, it was, just, it was just sitting in my head. I never really fleshed it mm -hmm. out. It was just an idea that I right. had. So when you had uh, the thought of, like, chat with your friends about Ryan's idea, like, uh, how long did that take to actually have some actions going on and you guys collaborating and really start flushing out the, the, idea, uh, the script? Like that, the that didn't take too long. Um, he was talking about weeks, making short uh, films, weeks. and it was, yeah, within, within a couple of weeks, he called me up, we just sat down, and we literally the storyboarded, we knew we didn't have any dialogue, we wanted to be silent, um, yeah. essentially, you know, sound effects, but there's not going to be any talking, so the whole concept was, we won't worry about dialogue, we'll just storyboard it, so I knew a whole bunch of storyboards, we'll have a shot like this, a shot like this, a shot like that, and we sort of went through it, and he described what he needed, I don't know how to direct film, I could just sort of picture Visualize, my head, and picture. that, mm -hmm. yeah, and he knows the technical end of it. It, which I don't. <laughs> so I do. it was very handy. Well, much more than I do. Mm -hmm. With right. me, it was just I was drawing on the picture. If I had to shoot it, I would have no idea how to do it. So behind the frames and behind the storyboard, you have the, the story all flushed out. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's because it's silent, so there's no words in it. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's all of the imagery just tells the story. Mm -hmm. Still like usually we have pages of script, right? So how many pages of uh, pictures do you guys end up having? Uh, we had, I still have all the papers in my desk at home in a giant folder full of storyboards that we printed out on large paper. And I don't know, there was like 60, 60 shots, I think, that we had yeah. pushed was, out. Yeah, it turned out to be more than that, but yeah. mm -hmm. good 20 Six pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. So how many days did you did it take you guys to shoot it? To shoot it? Yeah. <laughs> well, obviously, <laughs> it took actual number of days actual shooting. Actual number of days shooting took about three or four. Yeah. Uh -huh. But there was a span in between when we shot all the stuff at the beginning, between when we could shoot the 
scene at the end that was like six months. We couldn't find a location for the last scene. Uh, so okay. we were just, we, I was working 50 hours a week, mm -hmm. I was working 50 hours a week, and yeah, everybody else had jobs. And it's really, really difficult to organize a short film when everybody's really busy. Yeah, there's a lot of schedules mm -hmm. sort of yeah. line up. And right. we came close to shooting it a couple of times, and then we have to stop. We come close and we have to stop. Mm -hmm. But when we finally got a shot, we were like, oh, jeez, that didn't we were take so too long. And then we looked at how much time about, oh, that took way too long. Yeah. <laughs> so it, took, it took longer than we wanted. We were mm -hmm. so relieved. So you shot done. more, and then you had to cut. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you are the lead, right? Yeah. Um, who else? Like how many? How, how many other people are there in it? Um, the only really significant other person in it, there's me, and then there's a character, the doctor, at the end. He gets the only lines in the movie, the only pieces oh, okay. of dialogue mm. in the movie. Don't give away anything. Yeah. No, no, he gets the only lines in the movie. Uh -huh. um, so there's a lot, there's a lot of background people that are reacting to this fellow in the chair. Uh -huh. um, Ian's actually in it. You'll be able to see Every, him. Everybody in the movie had something to do with the production because they were just on set. And on set. Yeah. Let's put to, you on camera. We told them to dress a certain way if they were coming down to the set to do camera work or mm -hmm. lighting. And we just they set up their stuff, and then we told them to get them the scene. Right, and right. It, which leads naturally to a question: So, what is the budget for the film? Or we is there a budget? That, <laughs> we were just saying, is we were, there a budget? We were talking about that in the car on the way over, and we, I, it's zero. Mm. It costs zero. Yeah. Next to nothing. I mean, a lot of people pulled favors for us mm -hmm. that we're grateful for, and we got a lot of handouts and a lot of help. Ah. I personally work at Joe Media, right. so that allows me to use some of the best equipment in the city to mm -hmm. edit and finalize this production, of course, of course, which yeah. a lot of people don't have access to. So a lot of people's first film uh, made with friends and family yeah. help. And, uh, so is this your, you guys' first film, or you have worked on uh, other um, I haven't like really done much else. Years ago, I've done a few things here and there, but that, that's, it's been a while. Uh, I've so you're on, working uh, at Joe Media. Yeah. I have uh, my name and the credits of a few things that mm -hmm. Joe Media submitted to the festival as mm -hmm. an assistant editor, mm -hmm. but never, it's never been my the director of your project. Yeah, mm -hmm. with two states, I've had my my school projects, but that's a collaborative effort as well. And, mm -hmm. and this is the first thing I, I feel that I can really attach my name to along with these guys is yeah. solidly my and the best for this. Yeah, it's really cool. So did you guys uh maybe maybe I already know the question, but let me ask so do you guys shoot in film or H D or like digital, right? It sounds yeah. like you guys would be the digital. Yeah, yeah. because it's gotten zero. Exactly. We, we couldn't afford <laughs> film. film. And, and, and you can play with it so like it's tape, right? Yeah. You stop by a few more days and then Oh yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. the the concept we had just caters itself to low budget. I don't mm -hmm. really as long as it gets the comedic point across, I don't uh -huh. care how it looks. Right. As long as people get the jokes and mm -hmm. understand yeah. what we're going for. Yeah. We, we had a, we had to change a camera midway through, but because of the way it was being shot and the kind of film that it is, yeah. it doesn't matter. It, it, it didn't mm -hmm. make it didn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, a little it, bit of correction yeah. afterwards. Wow. Still looks good in the end. Yeah. Like, if we had shot it on film, I might feel a little better about the way it looks. But, yeah, but your pocket would be drier. Right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> we would have had to raise funds. Mm, right. and, and wait longer. I mean, that's the very oh, yeah. yeah that, that, that's the thing, right? There was enough waiting time in between mm. the gap where we <laughs> didn't shoot anything at all. Mm. I mean, right. don't want to just sit on film reels right. for six months. Don't don't give uh, any way, uh, away any secrets or criminal evidence. So, but uh, the location thing that you guys try to find, did you end up finding it like uh, from like with permission, or do you like oh, what I'm doing here, like uh, without asking? <laughs> I'm no, shooting we, you guys. <laughs> we didn't. You know, feel non-descriptive. Uh, like no, we we got it legitimately. It's, mm -hmm. it's the, the office of some guy, uh -huh. or Travis, who actually worked on the movie. So right, right. We, oh, I was a little skeptical about how mm. it would turn out in the end, but it worked out perfectly. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. The other big location, I talked to my boss at the time. Mm. Um, he had a big shop, and mm. we knew we could do what we needed to 
to get in there. And I said, how would you like a credit in a film? He said, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we right, so that's a trick, yeah. From yeah. Him ask for, for ask shot. for permission and give credit and friends and good good people there, good hearted people yeah, there. That's pretty much how it worked. I mean, we were in and out of there in a few hours, mm -hmm. right? And it was all, you know, when the shop was shut down. So mm -hmm. yeah, all, right. all the locations were just provided to us by yeah. mm -hmm. uh, favors of one of the guys I went to school with, James, his girlfriend mm -hmm. worked at an office downtown, mm -hmm. and she hooked us up with the office space at the beginning. Yeah. Everything was just yeah. ha who you know. Right, and exactly. That counts for a lot in right. filmmaking. And Make it look real, right? Yeah. And especially if it's office setting. Yeah, like if, we, if we had to do any nice. set decoration, that probably oh, would man. have been. <laughs> 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 the little amount we had to do was, was enough. It did change uh, from the original concept, because yeah. originally we had totally different thought of where the main, the climax would take place. Yeah, it was, we were originally going to have it in a parking lot, and we just couldn't, we were going to have it in an underground parking lot, but we couldn't find any place that would, that would work. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Mm. And, it, and the we, lighting and stuff? Yeah. That was the other thing, was like yeah. the lighting would have been, so we oh. thought about shooting it outdoors, but it was, the weather was turning bad. Mm. <laughs> so, again, asked my boss, mm. and managed to, managed mm. to yeah, yeah, it worked out really well. So did you guys shoot in uh, mini TV or HD, like what you We, we shot in HDV. Uh, HD or oh, Sony? Gordon the McDowell, yeah. a local uh, indie filmmaking re renegade, I guess, and done a he's lot of like way. really indie projects, and he's he had a JVC HD camera that he would just lend to people, and it was just a blessing. <laughs> they knew him, he knew his school, and we called him up, and he was mm -hmm. more than willing to help, and just like one of the greatest helps in this movie. Mm, wow. What's the camera again? And is it mini DV or is it uh, it's, HD? It's an HDV. HD. Uh, consumer grade HDV camera. Mm. I can't remember the model number. It's the JVC model. Mm. Um, good camera to use and it, it's uh, good mm -hmm. for consumer. But once we, we had two separate cameras on on the shoot, um, we got one. We, rented one through my office uh, for the next part, the scene we shot a month later, mm -hmm. and just as an editor, looking at the, the difference between the two, the second camera was so much more mm -hmm. clear and pristine, because it was shooting at such a higher resolution, and it was professional grade rather than consumer grade. Oh, so but the one that you, you yeah. rented later. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, that I had to bump down the, the good looking stuff oh. to make it look a little uh, right, so it rustic, won't be more mm -hmm. rustic. And, yeah. So, but it worked out for me. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, when you after you shot uh, footage and stuff, why not? When you go back to the editing suit, did you like see challenges there, or you you thought oh, we need to actually we if, don't give away any secrets, of course. Uh, we don't don't tell us any like plot line or anything. Yeah. yeah. But uh, did you run into any like? Uh, Film making challenges there? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Probably something. the biggest challenge is separating my, the, the, sh the fun of the short with my day job. Mm -hmm. Basically, editing is my day job, and All I right. do it for 10 hours a day. Mm -hmm. And then finding the energy to stay at the office oh, okay. to work on my own stuff was really oh. difficult. And especially and still have your sense of humor and time yeah, and and working. Mm -hmm. Especially when we sort of didn't have everything shot, and I was reluctant to get to the, the grunt of it until we had all the pieces together. But mm -hmm. once it started cutting, it was mm -hmm. cutting together so well, I just, mm -hmm. you, you get on a roll, and mm -hmm. I was just laughing out loud while mm -hmm. I was shooting it. Some of the shots. Did you guys end up using everything that you have, or oh, no, there are no. scenes that are we, places that lengthwise you have to cut? No, there were there were there were pieces of it that uh, that were cut out that were much longer. There was things that um, that were really funny, but kind of missing the point of of the, the overall film that ended up that ended up getting cut. Mm. But uh, yeah, in, in the end, for the better of the film, really, if you look at it. Yeah, it will, you, you got to look at it that way for. In an editing perspective, you've got to keep pace, especially when you're. It's a comedy. Yeah, yeah especially when you're going towards the punchline. Mm -hmm. You don't want to explain the joke too much. Mm -hmm. And a lot of funny things happen on the way there, but it can go on for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. for just, we, we wrote out all these gags and the storyboard phase, and we were just killing ourselves laughing ah. yeah, at the concept of doing them. But then in the editing stage, it was just. 
we, we were, I'm, I'm sort of, we were talking about in the car, those could exist as their own movie mm -hmm. rather than yeah. part of this one. And, right. just, just keep and right. a few things, a few things that were shot, just try this when we were on the set, we went, try this, try that, and shoot a few different things. And um, it wasn't always the shortest, the easiest shot that ended up in it, but it was always kind of the best one from from seeing the end result. I was. After everything was shot, I was sort of absent from it for a while, and then I would get these notices from Ian, check out the latest version, check out the latest version, I would go and I would look and I would see these little changes, but I was so far removed from it by that point that uh, I started to see how it, how it was pieced together better. I was like, okay, okay, this scene was there, and then I was, well, there's something that I couldn't remember, so it, to me it played very well. Yeah. Like, I didn't really miss anything that was there. Right. It was and great. sometimes being away from it for so lo for, for a longer period gives you fresh fresh pairs of eyes. Yeah. Looking yeah. at the thing. Right? From you just lo watching you guys chatting and I, I see a lot of creative energies between the two. Do you, do you guys uh, have another film, short film that uh, you have in mind already? Like one of those we'll extra probably, ideas that you talked about? We'll probably do it again. Um, yeah. I'm convinced that if I can get the discipline within myself <laughs> to, to, to just like forget about, not forget about work, <laughs> you know what I mean? uh, but just to, to find the time in my weekends just to devote to another project like this. Really yeah, it always comes on the schedule because it's fun when, when you're coming up with them and it was fun to shoot it, but um, yeah, just, just getting the schedules right and getting the timing right. So it limits what you can do as far as subject matter and where you can go. You, you can't do a lot of crazy locations, you can't have a lot of people generally because you've got to work with so many schedules, but I'd, I'd love to do another one. Yeah. We, were, we were talking about what's the next thing, what's the next <laughs> thing, so. It's, it's sort of like, I'm, I'm more of a keep it simple kind of guy, I don't, I, I have grandiose visions, but my passions include some of the simplest things to do, just dialogue based stuff, or uh, just absurdity. <laughs> and you can do that for cheap. That's true. You can do the search for cheap. Mm -hmm. um, and I, there's a lot of good talent that worked on this, and there's tons of talent available. Uh, a lot of I want to mention the music that yeah, yeah, go ahead. That Ryan did a song for. Uh, yeah. I had some. Oh, you did the music like you you play the music or you sang it. Originally, or you, um, Ian had asked me to do the soundtrack, yeah. and we were midway through shooting, and I had sort of tempted in this this idea. It ended up being too much for what for what we needed, but he was someone that that could do something just right. I was sort of going off what was in my head, and it wasn't finished being shot. But I had an idea for the closing track that I thought it should be this sort of surf rock, very 1950s rock. Uh, song that should play over the, the closing credits, and that was one of the first ones that I had done, and it's still there over the closing credits. And I, I actually like the music that's in it now better than what I had. It fits it. It's tough to, to just give up, like to ditch some one idea for a new idea. But I had a CD that I had during school of my friends who had just sent me temp music for a school project that we never ended up using, and I just I was digging around for something that fit the movie well and I just threw those underneath and it turned out to work perfectly. And then we got my buddy Jeff Middleton to score a new track underneath the the climax of the movie and he just he gave us three options and he was in the hospital before that so he was having a tough time getting to it. I'm, like, I'm so grateful that he got it out to us and I'm looking forward to seeing him at the premiere. Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of um, like the the choice of the music, I was like, oh, he's not going to use all the, all the music that I wrote. And then I thought, after I saw it with, with the music in place, I liked it better, but it was the same thing of the editing. There was a lot of funny stuff that we were like, it just doesn't fit it. And it was the same thing. So I wasn't, I was like, this much sure that, oh, there goes my stuff. But the track that I really wanted is still at the end, and it oh, suits it's, it better. It's, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I want to extend the credit to get more of that song. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, even if it's just my, our names just on there for you know, five minutes, <laughs> five minutes. I overdid on that name just so you can hear the song. Uh, that's, I'm fine with that. But it was again like an editing choice where it just came down to the music that I had wasn't going to work. And the more I think about it, yeah, the stuff that's in there is much better. Yeah. Much much better. But just a, a choice among the options has to be done. So. I kind of like it. Well, sometimes you have to make tough decisions and uh, go. for the good of the film, there right? I need the director, so <laughs> I gotta go with that decision. <laughs> I like being the, uh, the voice.
Well, it sounds like you guys have lots of ideas, well, and uh, much now much you are award-nominated uh, filmmakers, right? So keep it cranking, and I, I look forward to seeing some more of your films. Yeah. And thanks a lot, Ian. Thanks a lot, Ryan, for doing this for my job. Thank you.